all right welcome back to the channel warhammer man back in the studio and we got a little follow-up from games workshop and it looks pretty good so far but uh we will take a closer look if you're new to the channel and you enjoy daily videos on warhammer 40,000, kill team necromanda age of sigmar or warcry horus heresy pretty much anything gw related painting modeling conversion tutorials uh you know rampant speculation reactions reviews news make sure to like and subscribe all right, so a new era of paints, new contrast colors, reformulated shades, and our best white spray ever. Okay, so just right off the bat, it says a new era of paints. But really, it's not. It's not a new era. It's just more contrast paints and reformulated shades, and then also the most expensive primer in existence. So that that's my guess right off the bat from that title. So... Uh, all right, so we can see a couple of the models here. Uh, not sure exactly what's going on with each one, but you know we can see these are obviously like the more traditional style of contrast paints, just in different colors, uh, which look pretty good. This is really close to the uh, Plague Bearer Flesh one, and that's one of my favorite contrast paints for orcs. It looks amazing, uh, especially with a wash over top of it. Uh, this one's pretty cool. I mean, the colors look good so far. I'm sure we'll see a bunch more, so I'll wait to get crazy speculate until we see. Oh yeah, nice. Paint makes Warhammer and gorgeous miniatures are a key part of the Warhammer hobby. There is nothing better than two epic looking armies facing off on the battlefield. And we'll all take great enjoyment in sharing our product, uh, proudest paint jobs on the internet. To help you keep creating incredible armies and jaw dropping models, we're massively expanding our contrast range, improving our range of amazing shade paints, and creating our smoothest and brightest ever white spray. The best just got better. Okay, yeah, that does look like a lot. So, so for the new shades, I'll reformulate it to apply effortlessly plus seven new shades. So interesting. So they look different. They look a little like kind of milky uh, compared to the normal shades. You know, being a washes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so the Mortarian Grime looks sort of like a kind of bone looking shade. The Berserker Blood shade uh, looks just like a really washed out kind of like pink. Croac Green. Uh, so it's, it's basically the same thing. It's like a white paint, but it has a green tint to it. That seems like what these are. These seem like they're all um, like a little more... I guess it's because they're shades probably over contrast. That makes sense. So Croak Green, Poxwalker is like somewhere in between the blue and the green. Soul Blight Gray is, well, you know, it's like a really, really light gray. Targor Rag Shade, Raid Shade. I can't quite tell what that is. Maybe like a purple. And then Tyran Blue. So they look okay. Um, I don't, I'm not sure that these are specifically filling a gap. You know what these actually look like? They actually do look good because to tell you the truth, a lot of times with the Citadel shades, uh, I will take the actual shades and then I will uh, use like medium with them to essentially take down the shade a little bit. And then I almost use them like a little more like a glaze. And that's what these really look like. These look like they're supposed to be a little more towards like the glade and a little less towards like the wash or shade that we typically see. Um, obviously, I will get these when they come out and uh, I'll have a much better idea once I use them. Uh, and full disclosure, if you guys don't know already, uh, you know, I'm a commission based painter, this commission based studio, and I use tons and tons of contrast paints and I absolutely love them. They're phenomenal. I have extensive experience with the contrast paint line, so I can definitely give you a, a specialist view on these things. So now as far as the regular contrast colors, so what was that? There was seven shades and then there's 25 sensational new colors to make painting creative schemes easier than ever. So what is there now? I think there's 34 contrast paints right now and I have the full set and to tell you the truth, granted I do paint quite a bit of the same stuff because certain paint jobs are very popular or like styles or colors, but to tell you the truth, if I was going to go back now, after using the contrast paints for as long as I've had them, if I didn't have any of them now, but I have all the experience I have from the contrast line and everything, if you ask me, would I right now turn around and go back and buy the new line, the old line again, I probably wouldn't, to tell you the truth. I love the paints. They're great. They're phenomenal. They're amazing. But I don't think the line is what is necessary for them or what it's not even useful. I mean, I've opened and used every single one of the contrast paints. But to tell you the truth, 
I can probably point out like 12 to 15 of them, maybe like half the line. And you 99.9% of what I have used comes from like those 12 to 15 paints. So if I was going to go back versus just buying the full line now versus just buying specific paints, I probably wouldn't have done that because you don't get a massive discount for buying the whole line or anything crazy. So you're not getting massive savings or anything. And truthfully, with the exception of like literally testing out some of the paints and just trying out all the colors when I initially got them, I, I can honestly say there's probably, I mean, just looking at my rack, there's probably 15 or 20 of them that have, uh, that are still full, like, you know, never used other than just kind of trying them out a couple times. Uh, and then along the line i can't remember exactly when these came out but it's been a few years now what like three plus years something like that three years four i don't know it's hard to keep track especially with everything going on but let's just say in the last three years roughly there's certain paints out of the contrast line that i have used up probably at least maybe 10 of so like the black the white uh there's a couple other like big ones that i have gone through quite a bit that are just absolutely phenomenal so in all reality, you know, I would rather just have more of the ones I'm going to use up than just have every single one that exists. That being said, I'm sure there's going to be some absolute winners out of this. Very difficult to tell how they have it laid out right here. But we have Iron Jaws Yellow, Leviathan Purple, Rattling Grime, Black Legion, Celestium Blue, Gargox Sewer, Sigvalds Burgundy, Storm Fiend, Mantis Warrior Green, Pilar Glacier, Dreadful Visage, Croxagore Scales, Frostheart, Gut Rip of Flesh, Briar Queen Chill, Striking Scorpion Green, Imperial Fist, Eldari Emerald, Bad Moon Yellow, Luxian, Luxian Purple, Doomfire Magenta, Magmadroth Flame, Bale Red, Acerman Blue, and Carandrus Green. So just kind of looking at what we see right here again. You know, there's 25 new paints right here, and I feel like probably 15 to 20 of these end up in that same category where I just never used them. You know, and not because they're bad or anything like that, but there's something else in the range that's either really close to it or just does the same job but better. So it's just always going to win when it comes to using those two colors. Um, and I love contrast paints, so I'll definitely be picking these up. But I have a feeling it's not going to be a situation where it's worth all of them. And just so nobody thinks I'm like contradicting myself either. You know, sometimes I buy things that as just a regular consumer or painter, I wouldn't normally buy because I have the channel. And, you know, I do like reaction and review videos on products. So it changes the dynamic to whether or not I would sometimes purchase something. So I don't want you guys to think that, you know, I'm ever being like contradictory when I talk about prices or when I talk about if I'm going to buy something or not. You have to understand that sometimes I do buy things that I normally as a consumer wouldn't buy just to do like the unboxing or painting or, you know, et, et cetera, like review on it. So it is definitely a factor. And I just want to be real with you guys about that. Uh, so as far as the white scar, uh, the new spray under zero there's a 0% chance I would ever purchase this. Uh, I do not like Games Workshop sprays. They're extremely overpriced and they're, they're honestly not even that great a quality. So you can buy another spray from somewhere else for 2 or $3 that will do the job as good or better. And if you're honestly afraid of using competitions spray and the only thing you're willing to use is cans of Games Workshop primer, I mean, after like how many cans of Games Workshop primer can you just buy an airbrush and use the airbrush to prime everything with you know so i mean what they're 20 bucks a can or something like that so after 10 cans of primer you might as well just buy a compressor and an airbrush so you know there's literally no world where i would ever use them and i used to exclusively use them i used to pay for those like 30 dollar retributor armor gold <laughs> spray cans like an idiot uh anyway let's keep going so new contrast colors in 2019, the Alchemical Genius and the Citadel Color Labs came up with contrast. Okay, so there's our answer. 2019, so about three years. This revolutionary new range of paints made painting miniatures faster and easier than ever. Unlock fresh approaches to painting. It helped countless hobbyists express their creativity, whether painting battle-ready armors or golden demon entries. I do agree. They literally changed the game for me. Now it's time to take it to the next level. 25 new contrast paints are expanding the range into a whole new realm of vibrant colors. These new paints unlock wilder colors, palettes for your armies, 
meaning they'll stand out even more on the battlefield. Painting mind-blowing models will be easier than ever. 25 new paints is a lot of color to cover, so we split the range into four simple categories to help you get an idea of what they look like. These new colors run the game. Gambit? Uh, is that how oh, that's spelled? I always thought it was run the gambit. Maybe it's run the gamut, and I didn't know that. Uh, from bite, bright and bold to grimy and eerie. Whether you're painting a tank turret or raging endless spell, there's a pot here for you. Warp fueled and wonderful. Okay, so here's our first little group of them. It's tough to tell in these pictures, I'm not going to lie. Because here we can't see like any contrast effect. Here we can see really nice like contrast effect. Here we can't see any. You know, and then we see it a little more on like some guys than others. So again, it's very, very difficult uh, to tell. I do kind of like a couple things that they did here though. I like that they painted the bases. Even though these aren't completely like flat, they have a little bit of texture to them. You can kind of see the streaking and pooling. So it gives you a little better of an idea of what you can expect when you're actually applying these to like a flat surface, which is something you normally don't see very much from GW. Because there's techniques to do really nice paint jobs on flat surfaces, but you have to do it more like a glaze. And I think that's another thing that people don't understand about contrast paints. People think these are like easy beginner paints that you can just slap on and they're going to look good. But they're actually just really amazing, powerful tools that if you just practice with them a little bit will exponentially increase your game. But it doesn't mean they're easy right off the bat. There's definitely a learning curve to them. And once you master that initial learning curve, they're like one of the best tools you'll ever have. Now, that being said, all contrast paints are not created equally. You've probably heard people talk about different paints from the line and say this paint is really bad. Like the, um, what is it, Gulliman Blue or the Ultramarine Blue? Uh, I can't remember what it is, but it's the blue, dark blue contrast paint. It's really bad. It looks kind of like this purple, but it's like kind of streaky looking and just always gets the worst reviews. And it's always one that people seem to like try out when they're trying to compare contrast paints to something else. That's probably the worst paint in the entire line. Now, that being said, there's other paints in the line that act completely different. And there's, other, there's some that act similar, but just not as bad. But the truth is, it's sort of like the fine line between some of these are like a glaze, act like a glaze when you use them. Some of them act more like, you know, just an opaque paint, more traditionally like what you're used to seeing. Some of them leave behind like really dark contrast others are like really really subtle or else the actual paint itself is dark and then the contrast just isn't enough between the darkness so these are really nice paints and they have a ton of quality and usefulness but they're not as easy i think as people think initially and i think it also being eight bucks a pop people say oh well if i want to buy the full set of contrast paints i have to spend you know 300 to now like 600 dollars for them but i can just buy this set over here for like a hundred bucks or something like that and the truth is i think that's what scares people off is they think they have to buy like the whole line i think it would be much better if you literally just bought the best 10 contrast paints and maybe i'll do a video like that if you guys are interested the best 10 contrast paints and then after that you can kind of experiment around buy one or two here and there you know because that way you're spending 80 bucks on 10 paints which is a lot it's expensive for 10 paints but at the same time you those paints will serve you so well and the, the length of time that these paints last, you know, most of your paints you never finish up. I mean, the fact that I'm a commission painter, obviously I go through a lot more paint than most people do. But the truth is, you know, prior to commission painting or most people's paints, you know, either dry up or whatever, way before they ever completely use them. So, you know, yeah, you've paid eight bucks, but how much of that paint do you use on each model you paint? And how many models are you going to be able to paint with that eight dollars? That's how I look at it anyway. So, but you know again nice looking colors here tough to tell exactly how they're gonna act especially in these photographs without being able to zoom in or have them in our hands uh, these are some of the boldest and brightest colors in the contrast range they're perfect for creating vivid finishes and striking effects who knows what arcane elements our painting technicians mixed up uh, to such vibrancy uh, so croxagore sails or luxium purple are perfect for painting the warp touch demons of zinch in all their chromatic splendor while imperial fist yellow or striking scorpion Green will give the science of flame access to a kaleidoscope inferno. Let your imagination run wild. So then the next set is rich and regal. So again, on these ones, just looking at them, you can only really see any contrast effect on these two. Like if you told me this was just rattle can orange and this was rattle can red, I would totally believe you. You know, and again, it's 
the pictures, I'm sure. Uh, not every miniature needs to be blindly bright on the tabletop. A rich and easy apply color is a perfect accompaniment to help the vibrant models in your army stand even more out. These paints will give you reliable and resplendent results with no fuss. Ideal for the core color of an army. Need to paint some solid Space Marine armor? Hues like Bale Red and Bad Moon Yellow will make short work of saturated ceramite for any chapter. Or if you've got your eyes on Heat Knights of Slanesh, Warhost, Doomfire Magento will give you luxurious robes you need set, uh, to satiate the Lord of Pleasure himself. Next we have the Ethereal and Eerie. Okay, so these are some pretty cool effects right here. This is something that I do often. Uh, I have actually a color that I mixed up um, that's very close to both of these. This one is one of my favorite ones to use right here. And it's basically just like a mixed like dilution that I use for like a glazing effect. And it looks really, really cool. So it looks like that's kind of what's going on here. And then this one looks, this is the one I pointed out in the beginning, I think, that looks very close to one of my favorite contrast paints, uh, which is uh, the Plague Bearer Flash. And this almost looks like the way the Plague Bearer Flash looks when you wash it afterwards with the green wash. The, I think it's the Bailton green I use. Uh, and then it gives it like kind of this color to it. So this is sort of like the effect combined. So this these could be pretty cool. I'm definitely looking forward to uh, getting my hands on these. Could definitely be pretty cool. And it, it looks like they're clearly filling a gap with each of these paints. So it's not like they're just blasting out a bunch more of each color. It looks like they're they're addressing missing paints on the line or ones that maybe just aren't amazing. While the words of Warhammer are littered with incandescent energy weapons and boldly colored robes, uh, they're also home to pallid ghouls and ethereal entities that can discorporate in the blink of an eye. Pilar Glacier creates the illusion of an icy surface with no hassle. Briar Queen, Chill, and Dreadful Visage uh, live up to their names, making them ideal for spectral phantasms or smoky apparitions. The Mantis Warrior Green offers a luminous green yellow that's perfect for bolts of weird energy. And then the next category is Steadfast and Grounded. All right, so these are obviously like, you know, some deeper, dark colors. Uh, I actually really like how this looks on the Dreadnought. That is pretty cool right there. This also looks pretty nice as well. That burgundy, that looks real nice. It has a good contrast effect. It's leaving nice dark pools, but also giving you like good highlights. This one's tough to tell because there's areas that look good and then there's areas that look bad. You know, this one looks just way too close to the blue that already is the worst contrast paint. It really does. That looks a lot like that. That uh, I think it's Goleman Blue. I can't remember. The Black Legion. I would have to really have this in my hand. The, the difference I see right off the bat with this Black Legion versus the Black Templar now that's out. Black Templar dries extremely, extremely, extremely like flat. Which is great. It looks awesome. There's like no sheen to it whatsoever. This looks like it's still black, but it has like a little more of a gray tone to it and is a little more like shiny, a little more glossy. So, I, I mean, obviously the Black Templar is, is one of the my top paints. One of the ones I use up literally the most. It's amazing. The black and the white from the contrast line are probably the two best paints like ever created. Just because a lot of people have difficulty with black and white and those just make it so easy and just the quality looks so good when it's done. Um, so I think they're two most powerful paints in the entire line, honestly. Uh, so the Mortal Realms and 41st Millennium boast countless creatures with a touch of dark as well as warriors clad in weathered armor and solemn robes. Plus every miniature needs to stand on something like a solid dependable hero rock. Bring <laughs> That's so funny. They should have called it the tactical rock. Bringing earthier tones and solid colors to life is easier than ever with Garagox Sewer and Rattling Grime, while weapon casings in cast iron and cinch with Black Legion. Looking for an authentically grim livery, uh, garb your Space Marines and Stormcast Eternals in Stormfiend or Sigvald Burgundy. A shade better. Okay, so here we get a close-up of these shades. And again, this looks to me like what I do with the shades when I when I essentially like watered them down. 
you know, I want to still use like the medium that's in them, but I don't want as much pigmentation. So I don't get like a really like dark effect over everything. I want it to just be like a little more in the recesses. And that's exactly what these are. So they're, you know, they're essentially using them uh, similar to like a glaze as opposed to like a regular ink or a wash or shade, etc. So these to me look like basically glazes. So again, it looks like they're filling a gap. Now, is it easy to just take your, you know, medium and, you know, mix a little bit of your shade in there and then just use that? Of course. But, you know, there's an argument to be made for having a larger range so you don't have to mix. I don't mind mixing necessarily, uh, but I do like the consistency for commissions, knowing exactly what colors I use, not having to worry about if I have the same mix the next time, which is why I have quite a few of my own contrast paints that I have actually created from their line, mixing multiples together or using the medium. And I'll have like my own, I'll use an old empty contrast bottle and then I'll mix up a new, you know, half a pot of that. And I have quite a few of those that are really nice as well. So it looks like they're basically doing that for you, which is nice. I got to give it to them. It looks like there's some good stuff in this range. These shades look nice. I mean, the effect on these is great. This one has a, is like a little more white than the current contrast white, uh, which is nice. And then this one is just a little bit more, you know, when I say white, it doesn't have the same like dark gray that the, the contrast one does. And then this one, again, like the skeleton horde, it doesn't quite have as dark of an effect. So these look to me, the effects on these look a lot more like contrast paints than our regular shade line, if that makes sense. Our current shade line um, is, is not quite how these look. Now it could have something to do also with the white paint that's underneath these as well. So I'll have to again test these because if this is a fairly glossy white paint that's underneath them, it allows it to run more into the cracks and not really dry on like the big surfaces. And then it's going to give you what looks like more of like this shiny, you know, kind of glazed effect. So we'll have to see. I can't wait to get my hands on these to actually try these out and see. Uh, because it is, it sucks that they release a new primer with them because it kind of gets rid of your like constant. Like normally when you do an experiment, you have a constant and then you can compare everything to that. Well, if they're using the same primer on all these paints, we don't really know without seeing how the old paints look on this primer or without seeing how the new paints look on the old primer exactly how they're going to respond so uh, but that being said the citadel color experts have spent many months researching developing testing and painting with our shade range to find out how to make them even better than they already are the results of all the hard work is a total reformation of all the shade paints you know and love and the creation of seven new shades so did they reformulated the current shades so is the current line going to change? And then also there's going to be seven new ones? That's interesting. These shade paints are designed to provide instant depth and easily create stronger shadows, speeding up the process of creating great looking models. While contrast paints are designed to tint surfaces and give an intense finish, the new formulation ensures that shade paints will settle more effectively in the recess of your miniatures while leaving the raised parts of your models relatively untouched. And that is what you want. That's the effect you want. Because oftentimes, if you use a shade over top of painted stuff, you then have to go back through with the color you just painted over and then do like edge highlights or kind of like bring it back to where it needs to be. And then it looks much, much nicer than if you skip that second step. So if they can make it so you don't have to go back through, that's really nice. And that's essentially how like the glazing effect works. Not only have our existing shades been reformulated during the process of refining their recipes, our technicians were inspired to create seven entirely new paints. Mortarian Grime is a lovely shade of yellowish filth that's perfect for weathering war machines and dirtying grizzled behemoths. Tyran Blue and Berserker Bloodshade offer new ways to shade reds and blues that are more vivid than the existing hues, while Soulblight Gray is great for shading pale paint schemes. Our paint scientists haven't stopped there. White Scar is our best ever white spray paint. It applies smooth and is absolutely no fuss, giving you the perfect foundation for painting dazzling colors. And it works particularly well with our most vibrant new contrast paints. So I wish they wouldn't have went with White Scar as the name because White Scar Games Workshop's actual paint is terrible. Uh, so that doesn't give me any confidence. Not that I was going to be buying this anyway, but I think that's kind of funny. So what, I'm not sure what we're looking at here because it says old, new. 
old new. But what is on top of them? I don't know. I'm not sure what they're getting at right here. White Scar is designed specifically to use for contrast paints, so it's alongside the cool Gracier and the warmer Wraithbone sprays. There's nothing stopping you from using it with our regular Citadel range. However, it's great for creating punchier colors from a brighter undercoat. You can even try using your reformulated shades on it for bold new results. Just don't ask what a Citadel color team had to offer to the Golden Demon for arcane knowledge of this unique spray. Together with the new contrast paints and reformulated, you'll find it easier than ever to achieve the results you want to make your miniatures pop on the battlefield. So like seeing this right here, like to me, this picture, probably not going to be selling too many <laughs> products. I mean, this looks horrendous. So, I mean, I get it. They're just kind of like, kind of stand them out. But, I mean, this is just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just like too OCD, but this just looks like a cluster F. This is a cornucopia of colors, an absolute broadside of bold hues and new prismic tones. And we can't wait to see what you do with these new paints. Let us know what your next painting challenge is and which miniatures and armies you'll be looking forward to tackling using the painting Warhammer hashtag on Twitter and Instagram. Here on the Warhammer community, we'll have blah, 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 blah. Okay, I thought it might say something about when we were actually going to get these. Oh, look at this note at the bottom, though. The four gloss shades, null and oil gloss, Agrax Earthshade Gloss, Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss, and Cryptic Armor Shade Gloss are leaving the range. That's funny because I literally own almost every Paint Games Workshop has ever made, and I do not own any of these because the gloss uh, shades are terrible. Actually, I take it back. I have the Cryptic Armor Shade one, and that one's actually better than the others, but they're just horrendous. Uh, but yeah, that is kind of funny. So I don't blame them for getting rid of them because they're all terrible. That being said, and that Cryptex shade, that's like brand new. That was like the most recent shade I think they put out. That's funny. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely some winners here. I can tell this one is going to be awesome. I can tell this one is going to be awesome. You know, this obviously, like I said, is, is a great paint. I, I've already made it myself. This looks like it has some potential. There's definitely some winners here. I like how the new shades look. It's tough to tell from this picture because nothing looks particularly great here. The rich and regals. But on a close-up, I think they would. This looks pretty good. It's kind of in between a couple of important colors. Again, this one as well. You know, this is a nice vibrant color. I'm not sure how often I would use it, but it could do well for like plasma weapons or something like that. Although I do really like the uh, current one. It's actually the, the new shade, not a contrast paint, but it acts exactly like a contrast paint, which again was what really makes me think, or I think it's considered a technical paint, sorry. It's that uh, Tesseract Glow. It's considered a technical, but it acts a ton just like a contrast paint does, and it works phenomenal, and that's how I can tell they're really like perfecting this recipe because they're starting to essentially like the paints are having similar qualities even though they're in different categories. So yeah, definitely looking forward to this. Like I said, I will do, you know, in-depth painting, reviews, tutorials. I'll let you guys know the truth about these things. I always keep it real when it comes to GW. Uh, you know, at first when I saw this, I was kind of like, oh my gosh, this is like overboard. We don't need 32 new paints right now. Not all at once. And once you really break it down, we take a look. It looks like they've actually went out of their way to kind of fill some gaps in color and then also like quality as well so uh, i gotta give it to him looks really good so far definitely got me very excited uh, i was left wanting after the initial announcement and uh, i don't think we could have got better news than this so uh, let me know what you think down below if you enjoyed today's video make sure to like and subscribe for reactions reviews and news painting modeling and conversion tutorials everything from games workshop line pretty much warhammer 40,000, kill team necromunda age of sigmar warcry and some horus heresy as well if you enjoyed the video make sure to give it a thumbs up like share and of course subscribe Warhammer man, and I'm signing off.